Welcome everybody to the second all candidates meeting for Oak Bay Council and Mayor. My name is Mike Willamett and I'm the president of the North Henderson Residents Association. We, along with the Community Association of Oak Bay, are sponsoring both of the all candidates meetings. Our moderator tonight is Mr. Keith McCallion. He's a longtime resident of Oak Bay. He's a former teacher and principal. Some of you might have actually had him at some point. I won't ask for a show of hands. Uh, how old you are, etc. I ask you to welcome Keith to the microphone. Thank you, Mike, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and candidates for Oak Bay Mayor and Council. I would like to begin by reviewing the predetermined rules that will result in this meeting functioning in a very democratic and timely fashion until our nine o'clock close. I'll review the rules for candidates and voters, and I'll just do a, a little preamble. Uh, I'd like folks to know that we'll be doing exactly the same here as we did on Friday night at the Monterey Center, and that is three questions uh, directed to candidates for council, one question to candidates for mayor. There was discussion about changing that, but the decision has been made to keep it as it was on Friday night. Uh, there will be a two-minute opening statement by each candidate, and the order of candidates speaking was determined by a random draw. Candidates for councillor will speak first in that. Next, the candidates for mayor will speak. And again, that order determined by the same random draw. I will ask you to please hold your applause until all 13 candidates, 11 for council, 2 for mayor, uh, have been introduced. Following the two-minute opening statements by all of our candidates, you, the audience, will be invited to ask questions. The length of time to ask a question will be limited to one minute. Voters must direct their questions to a maximum of two candidates. I will not accept a question as the moderator that goes to more than two candidates. At my discretion, if I notice that a certain candidate or candidates are not getting questions, I may take during the evening questions directed to a candidate and direct them to a candidate who has not had an opportunity by question to respond. The specific candidates will have one minute to answer a directed question. Our timekeeper, Kathleen Matthews, Kathleen is down right in the front, and Kathleen has two cards there. She will indicate at 30 seconds with the yellow card for the candidates and somebody else, uh, asking a question, and then with a red card when we are at one minute. For each question posed to the mayoralty candidates, three questions, as I mentioned, will be directed to candidates for council. It's understood that the questions will be posed to and answered by mayoralty candidates, and questions will be posed to and answered by council candidates separately. Now, to allow further discussion, each candidate will have two opportunities during the evening to reply to a particular voter question, without that question being directed to that candidate. After hearing a specific question, a candidate can signal me to use one of those two opportunities. I hope that clarifies what we'll be doing uh, for this evening, and I would now like to introduce our candidates up here. This will be alphabetical. I'll begin with candidates for council on my immediate left, Corey Berger, Bill Carver, Pam Copley, Kareem Green, Gregory Hartnell, John Herbert, Michelle Kirby, Colleen Kirkpatrick, Kevin Murdoch, Tara Ney, Susan Woods. Our candidates for mayor to my immediate right, Nils Jensen, Hazel Braithwaite. Now you may wildly applaud. We will begin now with our opening statements and the first candidate for council to speak, Bill Carter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And first, I'd like to apologize. Um, 
if my head is shining and it's impeding anyone's vision, I apologize. Uh, I, I know you might delay, may laugh, but we had to stop the taping at Shaw the other day because uh, it was too shiny. <laughs> That's it. How's that? Okay, again, my name's Bill Carver. I'm 54 years old. I'm a retired police officer. Uh, spent most of my service doing local, provincial, federal, and international law enforcement. Uh, I'm a longtime resident of the Capital Regional District. Uh, I presently live in South Oak Bay. Why am I running for council, you may ask? Um, I'm very much uh, a proponent of, di of direct democracy. Uh, one of the things I've been really fascinated about the last few days is going out and interacting with the, the people in the community and getting your input on what vision you have for the community. I'm, I'm strictly an independent, I have, no, I have no party affiliation, and I'm really looking forward to maintaining the flavor of Oak Bay. That's one of the reasons why I moved to Oak Bay in the first place, was again, the flavor of Oak Bay, the uniqueness, the, uh, and maintaining the heritage that we have here. We have some challenges. We need to deal with the infrastructure issues, the sewage issue, all of the things that we hear daily through, throughout all of the, uh, the, the, the uh, municipalities throughout the Capital Regional District. Victor uh, you know, the Victoria, whether it be Esquimalt, whether it be uh, Souk, we're, we're all facing many of the same challenges. I look forward to being your representative on council, and again, I'm very much a strong proponent of direct democracy, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tara Ney. Hi. I'm Tara Ney, and I'm seeking your support for a second term on Oak Bay Council. I've lived and worked in Oak Bay for 30 years. I'm five generations Oak Bay. This is my home, and I feel very connected to Oak Bay. I'm trained as a psychologist, and I'm currently a university professor in the School of Public Administration at UVic. I feel very fortunate that I'm able to cycle or walk to work most days. People often ask, so why do you want to run again? Gosh, all those meetings. Well, there are many meetings and they are often very long, but the work we do and the decisions we make are about how we build our community. And to me, that's important. So why do I want to run for another term and what do I have to offer? First, people tell me that I'm approachable, I'm a team player, I do my homework, I'm open-minded, and I'll take a stand and speak on your behalf. Second, Oak Bay has given me a great deal. My two adult children were raised here. I'm very proud of them both. They do good things in the world, largely because of the opportunities they had growing up in this special community. And finally, over the last few years, I've served you in, um, on local and regional committees, Heritage Climate Change Emergency Preparedness, We've made important headway on each of these fronts. In terms of volunteer um, contribution, I've been on countless local, provincial, and national committees and boards. Prior to being on council, I had a key role in initiating girls softball as well as restorative justice in Oak Bay. I'm a community-minded person. I'm nonpartisan. I think, <laughs> I think for myself on your behalf. And my decisions are always based on what's best for our community. My vision for Oak Bay is that it continues to be livable and sustainable. It's as simple as that. I truly believe that together we can achieve this and be a model and leader to other communities. Thank you. Corey Berger. Uh, my name is Corey Berger and I'm running for council. Uh, apparently. Oh, my name is Corey Berger and I'm running for a council. Because I believe I have a, a unique set of skills and uh, opportunities to represent you and council. One of the things I've done since my last run in 2008 is attend most of the council meetings. And one thing has become very apparent as I've sat there and looked at uh, the many, many issues that have come by over the past three years, whether it be upland sewage, the more recent Oak Bay Lodge, or the upcoming official community plan update, is that we're not doing a very good job in communicating with our citizenry, and we're not doing a very good job in being open about that. So that's something I hope to bring. Uh, my background in education is in geography and in information technology, and uh, most recently, uh, looking at urban planning and transportation. I'm a member of the Community Initiatives Committee here in Oak Bay, which has been looking at an active transportation plan and hopefully in the near months we'll be going out to the community and talking to you about that. 
I'm also a member of Rotary, and I've been in, uh, lived in Oak Bay most of my life, and most recently I live near Estefan Village. So I'm hoping to continue the conversation with you after this meeting and in the weeks and months to come. And thank you very much, and hopefully you'll support me. Thank you. Michelle Kirby. How's that? Too loud? No? Okay. Thanks everybody for coming out tonight. My name's Michelle Kirby and I'm running for council. Um, I'm running because I think I can bring some positive new energy to council and new ideas. Um, not new ideas in a, you know, new to the world, obviously. I'm young and full of energy, but I don't, I think that this council could use a few few new ideas and new perspective from um, somebody who has a young family in the community. My goals include uh, improving community engagement, improving our active transportation choices, walking and cycling in the community, and making a sustainable infrastructure plan for Oak Bay. By community engagement, I mean getting out into the community and talking to people, having small meetings um, in smaller venues rather than having everybody come to council chambers in sort of a closed environment that's quite formal and intimidating for some. I want to reach out to the community and have everybody get involved, especially for our community engagement, or sorry, our official community plan review. Um, I think we can do better as far as encouraging walking and cycling in Oak Bay. Um, I have two small kids that go to uh, Willow School and I'd like to see them get there safely on their bikes or walking rather than having all the kids in Oak Bay chauffeured to the schools. Why don't we improve that situation and help them get there safely? And I want to see um, a sustainable plan for Oak Bay, meaning affordable and environmentally responsible. Let's keep it affordable for families and seniors and make sure that our taxes don't uh, push uh, people out of the community. And uh, lastly, my vision for Oak Bay is one of a green, walkable, livable, sustainable community um, that includes everyone, families, seniors, just an inclusive community. Um, and I hope I can count on your support on November 19th. Thanks again for coming out tonight. Thank you. John Herbert. My name, is John, my name is John Herbert and I'm running for re-election to council. I've lived in Oak Bay for many years and I'm a retired chartered accountant. I have served on council for 12 years and, and on, served on many related committees. A highlight was chairing the 2006 Centennial Committee. The past term I've chaired the Community Initiatives Committee and spent many, many hours on the sewerage treatment committee of the CRD. These are challenging financial times, and given our limited tax base, we have to be very conscious of the bottom line if we are to keep taxes affordable. Residents want more public meetings, more public consultation, and I fully support this. Regional issues account for 50% of the taxes we levy and we must find a way to allow residents to have more input to these decisions. We need to encourage innovative ideas to protect our heritage lands and buildings. It's time to review our bylaws, including our community plan, and to resolve the secondary suite issue. We need to maintain and expand our infrastructure maintenance plans, including more money for roads and sidewalks, and resolve the upland sewer issue with the CRD and the residents. There has never been an environmental study to say that sewerage treatment will make the environment better. I remain concerned that the current plan may make the environment worse if a better solution is not found to deal with sludge. There is no course to teach you how to be a good counselor, but common sense is the best guide. I ask for your support and pledge to continue to work hard for you. Please remember to vote on November 19th or at one of the advanced polls, and I would remind you the first one is tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Susan Woods. Good evening. I grew up in a small town in, in Nova Scotia that, just like Oak Bay, valued its 
natural and human heritage, and safe streets, and I knew all my neighbors. Leaving home, I became a reporter with national and local news for over 20 years. I understand how local government works and its impact on people and their neighborhoods. I be and in recent years, I've really enjoyed creating initiatives that build community. I began and still run the Moss Rock Review magazine, and uh, I have writers from Fairfield and Oak Bay who have been sharing their expertise and views with the neighbors since 2001. I also created and hosted the local his history program, Remember When, on CFAX Radio. Over nine broadcasting years, I chronicled the things that define us cu culturally and socially by interviewing hundreds of people about British Columbia's rich history. And I focused many on my, of my shows on Oak Bay's early families, architectural heritage, and historical events. My experience has taught me to be a good listener and to ask the right questions. Our three children are now young professional adults and they look to us for a future in their community. I want to help shape a positive tomorrow by making informed decisions about the community's vision and the issues that affect all of our lives, while at the same time working hard to protect the foundational things, our collective heritage, that makes Ope a unique and proud community. I hope you'll save one of your votes for me on November 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Pam Copley. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks to everyone for coming tonight. Um, I've lived in Oak Bay for close to 35 years with my husband and three children, now grown. Um, recently, uh, rather within the past five years, my 96-year-old dad from Ontario uh, joined us and lives in Oak Bay Lodge. Uh, I work as a heritage planner with the BC Public Service. I'm a longtime community volunteer and have served on council for the past six years. I'm seeking a third council term to continue the important work you entrusted to me since 2005, including representation on the Capital Regional District Arts Committee, Greater Victoria Public Library Board, Tourism Victoria, and Seniors Housing, Heritage, and Traffic and Pedestrian Safety. Over my past six years in office, I am proud to have actively promoted and to support it alternative transportation planning for Oak Bay, stewardship of built and natural community heritage, community-based seniors housing and care options, arts and culture at the community and regional levels, green strategies such as waste and pesticide reduction, local food security, soft plastic recycling, and the newly com completed Oak Bay community or green map. I recognize that continuity is important in this period of leadership transition to ensure ongoing support for valuable community initiatives, and I'm committed to providing that continuity. I bring six years of council and related community and regional experience to the table. I also welcome the fresh ideas of new council members, and I'm excited about new opportunities that a change in leadership brings, and about exploring new, effective, sustainable ways of doing business to enhance the community amenities we already enjoy. Oak Bay's official community plan is overdue for an update. I hope to be part of that process in the coming year and to actively involve our residents in open, inclusive consultation to reach consensus about key community issues. I am running in this campaign as a nonpartisan independent candidate and have no party affiliations or endorsements. I am dedicated first and foremost to serving my community. The views I express are my own based on my interactions with Oak Bay residents and on what I believe to be in the best interests of the community. Together we have an opportunity to build a sustainable, livable community now and into the future. For the voice of leadership, experience and integrity, please consider supporting me on November 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Colleen Kirkpatrick. Hello, I'm Colleen Kirkpatrick. I'd like to quickly thank the associations for providing us with this opportunity tonight. I'm looking to join council and actively support our beautiful community as we move further into the 21st century. I intend to be here for the next 40 or so years, so a good long-term municipal planning is very important to me. I also have a young daughter and would like Oak Bay to continue to be a safe place full of good memories for her. I am a registered nurse and before moving to Oak Bay was the Council Vice President for the Red Cross Southern Alberta Region. I have experience on councils in a leadership role and through this and my nursing background, I understand the gravity of making decisions that can affect people's lives. 
I intend to fulfill the role of counselor as my primary occupation. I want to ensure that there is time to properly focus on my duties and truly listen to the individual concerns of residents. For some time now, I have been interested in running for council and I am ready to go. I have been attending council and committee of the whole meetings and have been talking to numerous residents and business owners, as well as seeking clarification on issues from our helpful municipal staff. It is time now to have a fresh mayor and council take some time to review our official community plan and with the vital input of residents, map out our direction for the future. I would especially like to know how our more mature residents would like to see Oak Bay evolve. What issues are most valuable to you and what would you truly like to see more of or less of in the future? Beyond the community plan, I'd like to be an active member of committees in Oak Bay as well as being your voice in the increasingly important committees within the Capital Regional District. Supporting a healthy community, thoroughly questioning any proposed tax increases, and finding opportunities for funding long-term infrastructure planning are issues that are very dear to me. I hope that you, the people of Oak Bay, will consider having a diversified council made up of capable people with different backgrounds and points of view. I'm Colleen Kirkpatrick, the one with the good Irish name, and I would like to ask for your vote on November 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Murdoch. Thanks, Keith. On November 1st, 2011, a week ago today, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York opened a $40 million sweeping retrospective of Islamic art. And if you walk in the front door of that, there's a very modern looking bowl that was actually made in the 10th century in Iran. And on the rim of that bowl, it says, let me get this right, planning before work ensures success. Planning before work ensures success. And I think that message is as true today as it was a thousand years ago when that bowl was made. And I know in my industry, which is the high tech industry and it changes almost on an hourly basis, I still write a one, a five, and a ten year business plan every year to make sure that every decision that we make is the right decision to move us forward to our long term goals. If I look at our, our community plan, which is the big thing coming up in the next term, I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we are looking in the long term, that when we're making our planning decisions, that we're making them right for the very, very long term. I have young kids, I want them to be able to grow up here, uh, and their grandchildren to grow up here. So, uh, I guess I would just like to say that in the best interest of the overall community, uh, I'm also, uh, this is probably out of, out of little, the wrong spot to be saying this, but I'd be saying it door to door as well, which is that I would actually, in the best interest of the community, uh, encourage you to look very carefully at the incumbents. There's going to be four or seven new faces on council this year. I think uh, that given how complex uh, councils are and how complicated our job is ahead of us in planning, having that experience to work is valuable. Of course, I'm also asking you to vote for me, Kevin Murdoch. So on November 19th, which is a little over a week ahead of us, uh, please consider me as councillor in Oak Bay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gregory Hartnell. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you're okay. Am I okay? Oh, all right. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me this evening and everybody for coming. My name is Gregory Hartnell. I'm a 59-year-old married artist, historian, resident taxpayer in Rockland neighborhood of Victoria. I call myself the Rockland Outsider. You may wonder why the Rockland Outsider wants to come to Oak Bay to uh, serve you on your council. And the reason is this. I see a slow but steady deterioration in the quality of life in Victoria. And I don't want it to happen to beautiful Oak Bay. So my essential message is one of commendation to the wisdom of the good people of Victor of uh, Oak Bay, but it's also a very serious warning. Now, I'm a student of the Austrian School of Economics as propounded by Dr. Ron Paul. I'm nonpartisan, I'm independent, uh, and I am absolutely not uh, beholden to any unions, corporations, banks, or any such thing. 
but I do believe that we're entering into a very serious globalist designed depression period and it's not a good idea to go raising taxes of any kind in such a period of economic decline. So I am advocating tax liberty for Oak Bay and that means radical tax cuts residential property tax cuts, commercial property tax cuts, cuts to the bureaucracy, cuts to the, uh, the demands of the unions, cuts to the managers in Oak Bay, cuts, cuts, cuts. That's the message of austerity I'm bringing to you people. Please remember me, Gregory Hartnell, your Rockland outsider for an independent vote. Thank you very much. Green Green. Thank you. Uh, I'm Corrine Green and I'm running for Oak Bay Council, as you know. And I wanted to clarify, my Oak Bay roots are deep. Um, we moved back to Oak Bay last year from North Saanich, so I do not live in North Saanich. I think that was some confusion. <laughs> um, we, we downsized and here we are back in Oak Bay. And what brought us back to Oak Bay is everything that you love about this community. It's beauty. Um, the warmth of the people here, and so I want to assure you that we are dedicated and they will carry us out in a box, out of Oak Bay. We're here for that long. My husband will go sooner than I will though. Sorry. <laughs> um, um, I, excuse me. Um, I am running because, I am running for office here in Oak Bay because I have just served two terms in my previous community. I believe I bring skills and the ability to listen to work collaboratively, both with um, residents and also with, with council members. Um, I am a passionate person and I'm nearly out of time and so I just want to say that I'm straightforward, balanced and fair and I bring skills from not only council uh, work at the municipal level but also CRD and I do know how to move community goals forward with the help and support of you, my community. So I want to thank you for your time and thank you for attending. Thank you. We'll now proceed to our mayoralty candidates and begin with Nils Jensen. Hi, I'm Nils Jensen. I'm a lawyer, a graduate engineer. I've been on council for 15 years and I care deeply about Oak Bay. Uh, and I'm committed to protecting and preserving its values. And I'm excited about our future. I'm a fiscal conservative. Uh, I've demonstrated my ongoing commitment to fiscal responsibility during my 15 years uh, serving on the Oak Bay Budget Committee. And as your mayor, I will continue to look for ways to control costs. I've been a Crown Prosecutor for uh, over 25 years where I've worked very closely with police. This has prepared me for one of the key roles as mayor, and that is chairing the Oak Bay Police Board. I have extensive experience at the regional level for 12 years as the chair of the Regional Water Supply Commission and that has ensured the safety and sustainability of our water system from Oak Bay to Souk to Sydney. We now have a water system that is safe, modern and cost effective and that is the envy of the rest of Canada. I believe I have the experience to serve Oak Bay well. As mayor I will improve communications and involve citizens in decision making by holding regular town hall meetings and reaching out to the community associations. I will protect the ambience and character of Oak Bay. And I will continue to support developments that complement, not compromise, our unique heritage. My vision for Oak Bay is of a modern, vibrant and sustainable community. A community with public places where we can gather with our neighbors. A community with green spaces that encourages sports and an active lifestyle. A community that encourages walking, biking, and neighborhood businesses. A community that celebrates its heritage and its people. A community that is environmentally, economically, socially vibrant, caring, and progressive. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi everyone, and thanks so much for coming to the second All Candidates meeting. I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in England and moved to Canada when I was seven. We landed in Calgary, Alberta on December 21st, 1966 to minus 40 below. You now know why I live in Oak Bay. I grew up in Calgary and I worked in the geophysics industry for many years until my husband and I moved to Papua New Guinea where I taught mathematics at the University of Leigh. We moved to Oak Bay 22 years ago and we had our daughter. My husband is the chief financial officer at, at uh, Victoria Hospice and our daughter went to school at Willows and Oak Bay High School and she now attends university. My volunteering really started about 20 years ago in the community and it started at my daughter's schools and then it went on to volunteering for um, Bayes United Soccer, which I was president of the board for six years and on the board for eight. I then went on to BC Soccer and I also did uh, lots of other community involvement. I've been on council for six years and it's been a great six years. I'm very passionate about Oak Bay. I love Oak Bay and I think you do too. What I want to see is I want to see Oak Bay kept uniquely livable and enjoyable. I want to see the good governance that we've enjoyed over the past 15 years with Christopher Coston as mayor continued on. I am a nonpartisan. I, when I look around at my team, I realize that I have someone that represents every single political party in my campaign team. And I think that's a great skill to be able to bring together all of those people into one room to work for a common cause. On November 19th, I hope you get out and vote, and I hope that you get out and vote for Hazel Braithwaite for Oak Bay Mayor. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your candidates for Oak Bay Council and Oak Bay Mayor. It's now time for questions from the floor. Microphones will be brought to you, and I'm just going to remind folks on the ground floor that we do have a full balcony, and there's a microphone up there as well. So please wait for the mic to get to you. Uh, when you're asking your questions, you have, I'll remind you, one minute. Please be clear, concise, and identify the two candidates for counselor that you want to answer your question. Questions for the Maryland candidates will be answered, of course, by both candidates. Uh, a request, again, the, the acoustics in this room are wonderful, but as questions are being asked, I would ask that uh, people please be quiet and be quiet as the candidates respond to those questions. So that's it. We'll take questions. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, with your one minute, the yellow card will go up with, with your question at 30 seconds and the red at one minute. So we'll open the floor for discussion. Gentlemen up in the balcony, can you please wait, sir, until the microphone arrives? Uh, question for the mayoral candidates. Uh, developers are pressuring council to rush through a development variance permit in advance of municipal election that would see a massive six-story regional complex care and dementia building complex constructed in Oak Bay. This proposed massive development demonstrates blatant disregard for our Oak Bay community plan. The final meeting to approve this huge development is Monday at 7.30 at Municipal Hall. I would encourage you to circle your calendar and plan to attend this meeting. My question to the mayoral candidates is, tonight will you commit to ensuring that Oak Bay residents have the right to speak at Monday's meeting and have their questions and concerns regarding Oak Bay bylaws heard? As mayor, what will you do to ensure public awareness and consultation when developers knock on the doors of Municipal Hall with colorful PowerPoints and briefcases full of blueprints that threaten to transform the character and integrity of our tree-lined neighborhoods? Thank you. We'll begin with, with Ms. Braithwaite. Well, thanks so much for the question, and you're right, that is a question that's coming before Council. I would agree that everyone should be able to speak at that meeting. So I know that I have not made up my mind on that process, on, on the process of whether or not this should go forward. And what I can say is what the process has been so far is it has been a very rushed process. That's not comfortable for me. 
what i think happened at the last meeting was the motion was put on the floor by councillor jensen to move it to the next level so that we could then get input from the community we are looking for input from the community i'm not going to say whether i'm voting for or against that at, at this venue here because i need to listen to everything and listen to all of the sides and that's when i'll decide so you can be assured that my decision has not been made on that i hope that helps mr jensen Thank you very much. To answer your first question directly, uh, that will be, there will be an opportunity for all of the community to speak, whether they're neighbors or, or community from afar or outside the community. This is a very important issue, and it's an issue of process. I was opposed, actually, to the, the issue going forward at this point. I don't think that project is ready uh, to, be, uh, to have a public hearing because there has not been enough consultation. Uh, the consultation started really in September when the developer presented uh, the plans and said, how do you like these? I don't think that that's a proper way to consult. We should have been uh, involved a lot earlier. Uh, and we can look at the Oak Bay High School as a quintessentially good process, where actually the architect came with a clear sheet and essentially uh, asked the neighbors, what do you think about this? Where should, how should it be designed? Where should the entrances be, et cetera? What we have here, I think, in, in the case of the Oak Bay Lodge is a flawed process, and I don't think we should rush it. Uh, in terms of the merits, they will be decided on uh, Monday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next three questions, please, for members of council. Uh, lady here in the front. Um, I'm a sometimes volunteer with the Bunker Creek, uh, Friends of Bunker Creek, and I was just wanting to ask um, Michelle Kirby and Kareen Green about any ideas they had of how to improve the health of Bunker Creek. Thank you. Ms. Kirby? Great. Thanks for the question. Um, I think uh, this is actually something I'm quite excited about because I was highly involved with the development or redevelopment of um, Oak Bay High through uh, my work with the Community Association. I organized a, a forum um, on, this, on that subject and we have a beautiful opportunity with um, the redevelopment of Oak Bay High to work on the creek and um, made sure that some funds are, are used to, uh, they made sure that there was room left um, I think it's five meters from five to eight meters around the creek so that there is room to uh, improve the, the creek bed and work on um, daylighting more of the creek and returning it from its current status of ditch uh, to uh, something a little prettier that we can walk and cycle along and uh, maybe include a plaza beside it behind the rec center. And uh, the other thing is that the school is including a marine biology um, part of their the high school. And so that's an opportunity for them to, to uh, use the creek as a, as a learning tool. And um, I think we can also make sure we work, improve the community gardens further down there on Monteith and add to those. Um, oh, sorry. And uh, yeah, thanks for the question. Thank you. Another question for council candidates. I'm, I'm very sorry. Green, green, my apologies. Thank you very much for the question. Um, I bring experience working um, with something called Peninsula Streams. I don't know if you've heard of them, but we've worked a lot in restoring streams and water courses on the Sandwich Peninsula. So that experience, I think, uh, is very helpful. I also would like to see the establishment in Oak Bay. Of, I, I think we need an Environmental Advisory Commission. I do believe that with a commission of that type, that we could focus energy on these environmental projects. Volunteers are amazing, but they can be even more amazing in the form of a commission as well to work together with other partners. And certainly these kinds of restoration projects on something like Bowker Creek does, and I think you probably know this better than I do, involves partnership. And so um, I agree with Michelle Kirby that it, it could involve a school as a learning experience for students. It could involve the elementary school. Um, nearby, it, it, could, it could involve a number of partners um, that work on restoring water courses. Not that Bowker Creek could ever be fish bearing, and I'm not a biologist, but it would be a wonderful goal to work towards. And I thank you for your help in, in working on that project. Thank you. Supplemental answer, Corey Berger. 
Uh, thanks for the question. It's, um, I just wanted to mention a little bit the Boca Creek Initiative had put together a 100-year plan, which I've taken a look at. And one of the great things about it that unfortunately our, the current council hasn't done much with is it identified short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals. And one of the things I'd like to see done is take that plan and let's get, start moving on some of the short-term goals. I know the COD is busy waiting on a $500,000 uh, gas tax uh, application that should be coming back in within the next, in fact, it should have been in it by now. Um, so I think we can work very much with the COD and our regional partners because it is a creek that is affected by uh, Victoria and Saanich. But we do need to daylight more of it. There's an opportunity for a transportation corridor in terms of biking and walking along that. So there's a lot of things we can do that unfortunately haven't been done in the near future or in the past. So thanks very much. Thank you. Another question for council. Question here in the front row. Yes, for um, Tara Ney and Pam Copley. Uh, the, the community plan that's coming out, do you feel that there should be a restriction on the height of buildings, for example, like four stories uh, at all, or, or on pump volume of the building? We'll start with Ms. Name. Well, it is true. We're, we're going to go through a process here together, and um, uh, four stories. Let's see. What have we got in the community that's above four stories now? We've got Oak Bay Lodge. I guess we've got um, Marion Gardens went up above four. Um, I suppose this is going to require extensive consultation, but we need to pay attention to which part of the community uh, we're that would be a, more than four stories. Uh, I would have difficult, four stories is high for Oak Bay. I'm trying to imagine any corridor that would tolerate uh, a height of more than four stories. Certainly the Oak Bay Lodge is uh, going above that and uh, we, the, the, the mayoral candidates have spoken about that. I've spoken that at council. That's a massive building that's going on that site. So anything that would look like that, uh, I, I couldn't support, but it'll be up to the community to determine that. Thank you. Ms. Copley? Thank you. Um, okay, there we go. Um, I think um, the, there, there's a specific question about stories, and there's also the larger question about uh, uh, large buildings, tall buildings, uh, in the context of, of zoning. Um, in the proposed review of the OCP, um, we will be looking at and ensuring that zoning does not encourage either mega houses, um, additional stories that are unnecessary and, and don't, uh, and that detract from the um, uh, neighborhood, uh, surrounding neighborhood, the community ambiance. Um, and there, and we'll also be looking at, I think, the possibility of incorporating and encouraging disincentives to, to go over those limits. Um, we, we are uh, always, and I think we'll be going forward, uh, to try to create policies um, that are sustainable. And, and so, uh, larger is not always better. Um, and I think that uh, we do need, of course, to be planning for these things. So uh, looking ahead rather than always being responsive is appropriate. Thank you. Uh, two supplementary answers. Ms. Green followed by Mr. Hartnell. Yes, thank you. I just want to respond with, with three points. One is that the official community plan review is a must because your original plan was written, I believe, in 1981, updated slightly in 1997, as long as you have a plan that is that outdated, and a zoning bylaw that is outdated, then you are vulnerable to development pressure. As well, the third point I would like to make is that I would like us to explore as a community together the possibility of having a qualified planner. I think as long as you don't have a qualified planner, um, and, and you have outdated uh, zoning bylaws and OCP, developers um, sometimes have the upper hand and they, they put relentless pressure on communities to develop. So I think I'm looking at prevention rather than reacting after the fact. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Our 
family made uh, uh, the money it did in the construction industry, so I'm certainly not opposed to development. However, in my 10-point plan, I advocate for a strict four-story height restriction in Oak Bay. I don't think that the good people of Oak Bay should have to wait seven years either for a huge monstrosity on Beach Drive to get finished. That thing's only 50% sold. So uh, we have to protect the district government from developers who do not have bona fide financial plans. And so uh, this, 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 this is just really, uh, I imagine, quite intolerable, not only for the, uh, the neighbors of the Oak Bay Lodge, with this out of scale proposal there, uh, the Oak Bay Beach Hotel is still not finished seven years later. So uh, my message is four story height restrictions. Thank you. Thank you. Another question for council lady at the back over here on my left. Hi, my question is for Kevin Murdoch and Colleen Kirkpatrick. I would like to know whether or not you support amalgamation and why or why not. Mr. Murdoch, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, I guess in short, no. That's probably the, <laughs> the, the easy answer to that one. I, you know, I guess uh, like anything else, you look at it in the context of facts uh, and you research it. And, and at this point, I haven't seen anything that's compelling to me that tells me that there's any cost savings or any efficiencies that come out of it. I know that people often bring up fire and police, and, and as a community, we've done actually a very good job of moving our police services uh, and fire services into the 21st century. Our fire uh, has very few holes now in terms of its, uh, its, its ability to move back and forth with Saanich and, and Victoria. And the community policing model that we have uh, in place is an incredibly efficient policing force. And I think sometimes, I think we see it with Esquimalt and Victoria, how, how negative that can be. But uh, when it's not done well, but in our model it works exceedingly well and it's also engendered a, a, a culture of participation with the community um, that's allowed us to hold events like the uh, Blethering Place car show, uh, for instance, which you know is really only cost feasible because we have so many volunteers there helping out with that. So uh, when we can hold events like that that have 15,000 people that when it costs the like, city $300, it's a pretty good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kirkpatrick? Thank you for the question as well. It's a very good question. I know a lot of people are interested in the answer for that. I don't have the exact answer, but when I think of amalgamation, I think there's three things that we really have to consider. Um, will it increase our level of service? Will it decrease our overall costs? And how will it affect our identity as a community? I think our identity as a community in Oak Bay is really important, and that requires some value to be brought to account as well. Um, I believe the right balance could be found with more shared services within the CRD, um, but not a complete amalgamation. I don't think that fits. I've done a fair amount of research on, on the subject, and it seems like amalgamation seems to be a bit of a Canadian phenomenon. And it's, it's not found in the States, and there it was one case, I think, in New Zealand in the last decade. It's just not, it's a bit of a Canadian thing, and I think we need to look and see other ways that we can make uh, our costs come down and efficiencies higher. Thank you. Thank you. Supplemental answer, Mr. Herbert. When, amalgam when amalgamation is raised, normally the two issues that are discussed are cost and communications between the police. I very seldom hear service as being an issue that's discussed. Our costs are incredibly low in Oak Bay. Our administrative staff fits into less than half of one floor of the hall. We have 13 administrative staff members, all of whom do multiple jobs. The police communication issue has basically disappeared with the Prime BC system. Every case that is entered into the computer is available to everyone throughout the province. We have also sat and contracted 10 of our specialized police services to both Saanich and Victoria. We spend about $400,000 for those services and yet we continue to have the lowest police cost of all municipal forces. If you want to see how an amalgamated council would work, I would encourage you to go to a CRD meeting. Hope Bay, Hope Bay gets one vote, Saanich gets five, Victoria's gets three or four, 
There's seldom unanimity on most issues. Ten the problems of finish. Lankford has no bearing on Victoria. It is very confusing. Thank you. Another supplemental answer, Ms. Kirby. As John spoke there, it made me think of something. Uh, I've, I've heard this a lot on the doorstep, and I also know there's a Facebook group for Amalgamate Victoria, and there's a lot of appetite for this. Um, I also noticed that jo uh, Jack Knox uh, did a little article about the 244 candidates in front of you in the region. And I, I guess you're probably asking the people that might be losing their jobs if, uh, if we were to amalgamate, maybe a bad audience for that question. But the thing is, um, the, the one thing I think of when I heard John say that we, we do run a very tight ship at Oak Bay, but at the same time, we don't get a lot of uh, the services that you would get from a larger larger municipality like a planner, which I think is a very valuable resource when it comes to big development and, uh, and change, and change is happening all around us. So I think there is some benefit to having um, those kinds of services, and it, maybe we can make our own model with, uh, with, uh, by sharing services with, with uh, Saanich and Victoria, but um, I think it's something we need to talk about. Thank you. Uh, two more supplemental answers. First, Mr. Carver, followed by Ms. Woods. What I'd like to talk about just a little bit is what my background is, is policing, and whether we should integrate, amalgamate the police services. And, and I listened to John and some of the other candidates here talking about what we have now. I think what we need to do, we take the emotion out of this, and we sit back and we say, let's do a review of the services that we get. We, right now we have seven different entities that are providing police services. And the men and women of each one of those uh, uh, police services do an excellent job in, in providing the level of service and the kind of service that the community wants. But what we need to be mindful of, the, the non-taxpaying citizens that are committing the crimes throughout the Capital Regional District, we, we don't live in, in 14... Uh, different aquariums, 14 different places where these people can't move through. So what we need to do is have a look and we need to spend more time investigating, following the offender and not the offense. And that's what we're doing right now. We're spending a little bit too much time investigating the offense and not the offender. And with, it, with, with amalgamation and a little bit more integration, a little more consultation, I think we'll find that uh, become less of an issue. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Woods? First of all, I want to say that amalgamation has been discussed in the Victoria area for over 80 years, so I think it's unlikely that it's going to happen anytime soon. But I think most of us do um, share a certain kind of um, perplexity at times about how it got to be this way, with 13 police stations, 13 fire halls, and 13 city halls. And I once was a great proponent for amalgamation because I saw that as a very bizarre model, and I, I thought it was inefficient. But I've come to change my mind. Um, I believe that amalgamation would be the death of a place like Oak Bay, and um, I don't think that it would be in the benefit at all. I think it would be more bureaucracy, and um, taxes would, would increase, and there's just a whole lot of complicated things that would happen that I don't have time to talk about. But I would like to say that as we go forward with um, in this fiscal time, that regionalization uh, and working together as... Uh, Governments working together as friends and good neighbors is certainly something that we're going to have to deal with increasingly. Thank you. Thank you. Question for our mayoralty candidates. Hi. This continues uh, another uh, part of another question that's already been asked. Um, Baptist Housing wants incredible variances for the Oak Bay Lodge site, but will not show council and residents a scale model. They have had the time, the money, and the expertise, but refuse, despite many requests. We can all guess why. This is unheard of with a commercial building. Three-fifths of the council still voted to have this proposal go forward without ever uh, seeing a model that residents also deserve to examine. Two councillors, sensibly, councillors Ney and Jensen, voted no, saying they did not have enough information. Two voted yes, Ms. Braithwaite and Mr. Herbert. My question is to Ms. Braithwaite, as she wants to be the mayor, 
why on earth did you vote that way since council clearly did not have all the information, especially the model they, and council and residents, have asked for? Thank you. Ms. Braithwaite. Thanks for the question. And you know, it, this is a, the toughest issue that's been before council in a very long while. Let me clarify first. The actual process that happened at the council meeting was we had a discussion. It was then decided that if we wanted to move forward to the next level, a, um, a motion had to be put on the table. Councillor Jensen actually put that motion on the table. I seconded it, and then it was unanimous by all of council, and that is what the record will show. What that does, though, is it lets, it lets it go to the next level so then we can have more community input. We needed to have a look at it from a wider community um, audience. Now, again, I have not made up my mind on this. It may have moved to the next level. That does not mean I'm going to say yes when it comes to council on the 14th. I totally agree. There has to be more consultation. The building is high. The impact is great. But we also have to balance what happens in that area and what benefit it brings to the rest of the community. My mind is not made up, and I hope that you can believe that, that it isn't made up, and that I will bring a very open mind as mayor as well as next week for that decision. Thank you. Mr. Jensen? Thank you very much. My motion at uh, council was to, in fact, table it uh, so notice could be given so the neighbors knew what was going on and so we could come back on the 14th. This, I think, highlights the problem that we've had with this process. Uh, it started really in September when it came to Council. Early in September, we asked for all kinds of information. We still are yet to get that information. We're told that we have to make a decision on November 14th. That's about two and a half months for an $80 million project. That's unheard of in Oak Bay. I mean... <laughs> When you look at how long and how careful council was when they looked at the Carlton House, when they looked at the first, uh, the, the hotel, I think this, I think our community deserves better in terms of the process. We should have been involved months ago, 12, uh, 18 months ago, with those, the, the initial decisions. Um, unfortunately, we weren't. And that's why we need an open and transparent uh, process for all of these large projects. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take a question for council uh, up at the back of the balcony, please. Hi. Uh, we've all heard tonight uh, our concern and our wish to keep Oak Bay, um, keep its character in intact. And yet we keep hearing the question about four versus six stories in a community plan that calls for four stories. My question is to uh, councillors Ney and Copley. Would they support, given the, the seriousness of an $80 million project and the shortness of the gestation period to us, would they support putting this decision off to the new council? Because it impacts on the future generations, the next council and the councils after that. Would there be support to put the decision off approach the community in full, not the little uh, variance notices to uh, the residents who are affected, to the larger community. I asked my question to them is, would they support putting this decision off till after the election to the new council? Sir, just to clarify, I think you, both, you wanted your question to I'm, May and Copley? To, yes. Thank you. Ms. Nate. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, it is true, I voted to have this tabled to go forward for community consultation, though um, any of you who are at council will know that I have argued and questioned this uh, project extensively, and I uh, tabled my opinion that I wasn't willing to support it given the lack of information. The, the project, in my view, is way too large. There's been no impact assessment on the massing of this project on our townscape. And we, I, we simply don't have enough information. I still haven't seen an independent traffic study. And I'm really still not convinced that this is the best place for this 
facility not only for our community but also for those who are going to be residents in this facility i'm concerned actually it will get a wise the individuals and there may be other better places but the really unfortunate thing as already been mentioned is that we weren't properly consulted it is a massive project this process is this isn't what the people of Oak Bay expect. We expect to be properly and fully consulted on something. It's a technicality, really, that this is a variance issue and not a DVD. Ten seconds, please. The project makes no sense. I really don't think it's a neighborhood issue. It's a community issue. And we should engage a process that reflects that. And I would vote to delay this project. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Coughlin? Uh, just to clarify, um, um, I've not been involved in the, uh, the decision deliberations because um, I declared a conflict of interest uh, because my father lives in Oak Bay Lodge. Um, so I won't be coming and commenting on the, on the variances that are being proposed and on the, um, the um, facility itself that's, that's come to uh, Council for consideration of variances. Uh, but I will point out that uh, very early on in the process, when we understood that Oak Bay Lodge was going to be redeveloped, um, my role was to ensure that our community retained a seniors housing care facility in the community that offered a continuum of care, hopefully had an affordable component to it, and that the land stayed in the public hands. Uh, we've achieved much of that objective uh, and now there is this specific council that's very large that's before the community. Um, and I fully agree with, with those who have commented before that the problem is the inadequate and flawed consultation process and the timelines. Certainly with respect to, okay, sorry, uh, there's my time is up, but again, the need for planning and need for a planner to help us through these very complex decisions. Thank you. Supplemental answer, Mr. Hartnell. I'd just like to mention that my dear wife actually works for the Baptist housing uh, people, and so uh, you know I, I have to make sure that that's understood. And at the risk of alienating her employer, I think they would be better advised to just. Uh, remember uh, the sensibilities uh, 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 and the fears of the present residents in Oak Bay Lodge. They're very upset about these rumors and uh, so um, just leave them be is what I would suggest to the Baptist Housing Society. Uh, look elsewhere for a, a, a suitable piece of property. Keep on working in a happy and cooperative manner with the district government and slow the whole thing down. Of course, this, the, the whole decision has to be made by the next council. It cannot be rushed through in the next day or two. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hartnell, just so you know, that's your second supplemental answer. Uh, another question for council. Uh, lady here in the front. Hello. I think Oak Bay is a very comfortable place to live for people my age and most of the audience here. But what I would like to hear are some ideas on how to attract the young families into our community. And I realize a lot of you have touched on things like biking, and I, uh, safe biking. Monterey is a, a horror show when I drive along there. Housing. I notice we haven't brought up that acrimonious issue of suites. Uh, subdivisions, uh, small houses, I don't know if you saw the article in the Sun on cottage style houses. Anyway, I'd like to throw this open uh, and I don't have to, so I'll start with, for instance, Corey and uh, Kevin. Uh, Mr. Berger and Mr. Murdoch. Okay, Mr. Berger, please. I think I understood your question to be uh, regarding housing diversity and looking at how we attract younger families. And I think uh, it, my answer boils down to that. We do need to look at housing diversity. I do support secondary suites. I do believe that they were acknowledging a fact that exists on the ground. I think we can deal with spot issues that arise through bylaws. I also support the idea of laneway housing. Uh, Vancouver has done some of this. And again, a very similar sort of thing. Arise small issues that uh, 
do come up. And I also think we need to look at in, in our regional or village centers, uh, you know, strategic densification. I mean, we're talking small buildings here, four to six stories to bring up four to six story buildings. Uh, along those major transportation corridors, because you can't forget that transportation and land use are intrinsically linked, and if we ever forget that, we're going to have a big problem. So, thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Murdoch? Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, I am pretty cognizant of the fact that we want to make this as comfortable for families and for everybody, right? This is a very mixed community, and it's one of the things that's so great about it. Um, I think that there's, I mean, there's so many things to go into in this one topic, it's almost impossible to delve into it. Um, but I think uh, primarily just getting into a, again, a, a proper planning model where we're looking at the long-term goals. If we have uh, centers, right, UVic, uh, the high school, the neighborhood learning center, the rec centers, uh, our, our, our commercial districts, making sure that we have access to those uh, biking, walking, and driving, uh, and our you know, matching our transportation plan, if we're going to talk about densification, if we're going to talk about secondary suites, that they're part of that broader discussion uh, and architecture, an architected discussion that sort of looks at where we want to do that. And I think that's an easier discussion to have sort of where we want to be in 50 to 100 years than it is to say, I want to put duplexes next door to you today. So I think there's a lot to be said for uh, just a very careful and reason looking at that. I think on, as, as someone with a young family, we have a phenomenal place to live right now. Everybody wants to live here, so it's just a matter of making it better. Thank you. Thank you. Supplemental answer, Ms. Kirby. Um, I, this is a, a really good question, and um, I think affordability is a, a big issue, at least it was at the last uh, uh, All Candidates meeting as well. So um, we have uh, we have the, the opportunity, I think, to, to look at this through the official community plan review, um, and I think this the concern of just about everybody is the rising taxes. And as long as our tax base remains residential and stays stagnant at 17,000 uh, population, then our taxes are going to go up because costs are going up. And we're looking at some major infrastructure challenges in front of us. So I think we have to look at ways of making life affordable for, for families to stay here. And that means maybe thinking about suites and also thinking about um, densifying around the, uh, around the villages and along the border of, uh, of Victoria and Oak Bay. There's, you know, these are ways that we could inc you know, increase our tax base and make it a little bit easier on everybody, on all the single family dwellings that, that exist here. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult, uh, thing to imagine change in this community, but I think that if we look at um, a vibrant, um, livable, sustainable community vision, I think it, it's, it's a positive one. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Kirby, that's your second supplemental answer. Another question for council, please. Uh, over here. Thank you. Uh, this question is for Corey Berger and uh, Michelle Kirby, what from your life experience prepares you to be an effective counselor for Oak Bay? Mr. Berger. Uh, well, it's interesting and a bit of a tough one. Um, so uh, I am, my area of study is geography and I mentioned transportation, it is my passion. Uh, and I did mention just seconds ago talking about the link between land use and transportation and I've done a lot of research and a lot of studying of that. I've also attended most of the council meetings in the past three years so I have a fairly good idea of where they're currently at with some of the major projects, some of the challenges they have, some of the successes they've had because let's be honest there's, there's that um, and I'm also a young person. I have uh, the opportunity to give a fair amount of my time in the next uh, few years and I've fair amount of energy, so I can uh, run around and talk to you all about the various things that you would like in your community. So. Ms. Kirby? I can't help but say that this has been a, a fabulous experience running because um, I turned 37 just as the election uh, sort of got rolling, the campaign got rolling, and everybody keeps telling me how young I am, and that's <laughs> lovely. Keep it, keep it up. <laughs> But I do have a bit of experience. My volunteer experience has uh, expanded quite a bit the last few years. I've been um, always been a member of the community association in every community I've lived in. But um, I've been a director for the last three years on the uh, 
Oak Bay Community Association, and I've, I've sort of built up the website with some friends and worked on maintaining that. I've uh, been on the pack at Willow School since um, since my, my son started there three years ago, and I uh, was the VP of the PAC last year and was in charge of parent education. I also think that that's something else. I have two small children, and they teach us so much. And uh, even though my kids are only six and eight, I've learned a lot from them, and I think as a parent, you continue to learn every day. So um, I think all that experience as a volunteer has really taught me a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Supplemental answer, Ms. Green. Yes, thank you. I think this is the last of my supplemental answers, but I just want to say that the people like Corey Berger and Michelle Kirby represent the very best of youth in our community. We want young people. We want, the, thank you. We want these young people to come forward and take leadership roles. This is our succession plan. Um, those of us that um, are nearer the end than the beginning, <laughs> my husband, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but seriously, I was, I was part of a very effective youth strategy in my former community and we have included young people, two per commission. They sit on our municipal commissions, they vote with us, and without those young people, we would be myopic, I think. So I, I, I commend anyone um, that is youthful to come forward and take these positions. It, it takes courage. Question for Mayor. <laughs> As a new resident to Oak Bay, after spending 16 years in Saanich, I was a participant in the Saanich Civic League. Uh, one of my tasks was to monitor election spending and source of funds, and I'd like to ask the two Maryland candidates, have either of you accepted contributions to your campaign in excess of $500 from anyone uh, in the realm of the real estate development industry? Mr. Jensen, please. No. <laughs> But I only, but I only wish that others were offering me 500 and above. <laughs> if any of you are out there, see me afterwards in the lobby. My financial agent is sitting just over there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Braithwaite. Also, no. Same reasons. Still, would love to have some contributions too. Thank you. Thank you. Question for council over here on the far left. Sorry, we're going to do, we're doing three and one. So, question for council, gentlemen over here. Thank you. Uh, similar question to some previous, and I'll ask it of um, Michelle Kirby and Susan Woods. Uh, I've heard a number of candidates speak tonight to the need to preserve Oak Bay's heritage, character, and community values. Yet in the past few years, we've seen several developments that are out of scale with their surrounding neighborhoods, such as Carlton House, the Oak Bay Beach Hotel, and now the proposed massive redevelopment of the Oak Bay Lodge facility. My question to you is, what actions will you take to stand up against this ill-conceived six-story big box style development? And just as importantly, perhaps more importantly, what actions will you take uh, to protect our character neighborhoods from similar mega developments in the future? Will you, and how will you, stand up for the community plan and for neighborhood values, character, and scale? Thank you. Ms. Kirby? Uh, thanks for the question. I think um, I've knocked on all the doors around uh, Hampshire and been to the meetings, and uh, I've heard a lot about this, and uh, actually, um, you know, you can't, you can't, um, development issues are the most divisive issues um, in a community. They're the most difficult issues that a council usually faces. Um, I think this process is extremely flawed and I think it's all as a result of not looking ahead and saying we needed a plan. I mean, too, we've waited too long to look at the plan and this has to happen. This is what I, my, was my priority in the last time I ran in, in 2008 was that we review the official community plan because it was so outdated. Um, without a plan, without a planner on staff, 
without that expertise on staff and some leadership from council, we really aren't going to uh, be able to handle these kinds of big questions. Um, as far as what will I do, I would make sure that we uh, hire some uh, staff to help us with these things and always look to the developer to give us something in return. We just can't give away um, our everything to a developer and not expect something in return. And in particular with the Oak Bay Lodge, if this is going to go ahead, which I don't think I'm going to have much choice in the matter, but if it does go ahead, I want to see traffic calming measures. I want to see them pay for a, hu a tra traffic circle. Ten seconds, please. And uh, make sure that they do everything to make this development something that's palatable to the to the neighborhood. And uh, I can't, still can't understand that we didn't get to see a model or any kind of visual. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Woods? Yes. Um, when I s decided to be a candidate in, the, in this election, it became very apparent to me quite quickly what was going on with the Oak Bay Lodge and the concerns of the residents. So in answer to your question, I guess the simplest answer is that I will talk to the residents. And I initiated contact with a number of the neighbors and uh, ask them for their perspective of what was going on. And, and really, it just comes down to just being, as I mentioned in my opening, uh, being a good listener and asking the right questions. Um, as for how to stand up to developers, you just stand up to developers. And you ask the questions that need to be asked. And you don't accept unanswered questions. And you don't allow yourself to be bullied. Um, on the other side of the coin, though, you need development. Uh, we're not, we can't stand still. So. Um, there's, there's, there's got to be a place in every community for commercial and business taxes, um, for some uh, some affordable housing. That's going to be a reality going forward. So there, you, you just have to balance everything, and um, but but not to be afraid to stand up and question and seek the truth. Thank you. <laughs> Supplemental answer, uh, Mr. Herbert. Your second. Um, at times, uh, people think when you run for council, you can make the decision you're going to keep everybody happy. Trust me, you can't. We're told that the funding for this, this project will disappear if a decision is not made in a few weeks. I have no idea whether that is true or false. Uh, there are three major players. VHA is dealing with the health side. The Capital Regional Hospital District has bought the land. Baptist Housing answered an RFP. It's an unusual project in that there's no rezoning required. In Carlton House and other places, there was a rezoning where you went on forever and you could design the, the building. The only thing that's asked here is a height variance and a parking variance. There is no rezoning. Uh, there are those who think we should be redesigning the building and changing the way VHA handles health care. That really isn't the question we've been asked. That's not saying I've made up my mind. That's not saying I think the process is right. My point is this is a very different uh, situation. Thank you. <laughs> Question for council. Gentleman up here at the back. I'd like to ask about secondary suites. I'd like to find out how uh, Mrs. Green and Mrs. Woods uh, stand on the issue. Thank you. Ms. Green, if I heard that correctly, secondary suites is what the gentleman would like to hear an answer on. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, let me say, first of all, that I supported secondary suites in my, previous com in my previous community because the community wanted them, and it was part of a broader process, and that was the official community plan review and the development of a housing strategy. Um, this is a conversation, though, we in Oak Bay have not yet had in any formal way. It has been divisive, I'm aware of that, and it is probably the most central issue that I hear on the doorstep and on the street as I'm walking and meeting all of you. So it's a very divisive issue. I'm hoping that through a proper public involvement process, through the review of the OCCP, that somehow we can lower the temperature on this issue and bring the community together to have that discussion rather than divide it now. Um, you haven't had the conversation. I, I need to hear that conversation if I'm elected and part of that process, and as all council will need to do. And I think really, if we put it in the context of an official community plan review and the development of a housing strategy that fits the needs of Oak Bay and Oak Bay residents, I think that's where we need to go. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Woods.
before I answer this question, I just want to add something to my last answer, which is, I don't know if I was clear about it, but I don't support the Oak Bay Lodge development, and I stand firmly beside the neighbors of, the, uh, of that area. I think I might have left that ambiguous. Um, I was talking, though, that there will be development, and we have to treat every case um, as it comes. But as for secondary suites, it really comes down to balancing the right of homeowners versus the rights of the community. Uh, many are concerned. Some have told me they'll even move out of Oak Bay if um, the new OCP includes secondary suites. Uh, others have said that uh, people shouldn't live in a, this community if they can't afford a home without a revenue property. However, if the suites are contained in the new OCP, um, I'm not saying whether I'm in favor or not in favor for them. My job is to reflect the wishes of the community, but if they are uh, included, then I would support them on a selective case-by-case -case basis subject to strict regulatory requirements um, and require resident landlords. And I know people have said you can't control that the house will always be owned by the landlord and therefore a resident of the property. Uh, but perhaps a covenant could be put on each each property uh, to, to, to mitigate against um, um, off-site landlords and rooming houses coming up and flipping and that sort of thing. Uh, and the other Ten thing seconds, is... Please. Okay. And um, the fact of the matter is there are secondary suites in Oak Bay. Um, they're illegal suites and, and they exist. And I think that all of these, these things just have to be ironed out going forward. Thank you. Supplemental answers, Mr. Murdoch. Yeah, I was actually dreading this and trying to answer this in one minute or less because I think it's much more complicated than one minute or less. So I have a lot of detail at the website in terms of what I think. I mean, in many ways, going back to the don't ask, don't tell, maybe the, the, the simplest uh, approach to things uh, is probably not a realistic option at this point. It's sort of out in the public. Uh, I would just say if we do legalize, there are options and there's lots of things to talk about. And I don't think that it's necessarily a yes or no question uh, to be talked about that way. Um, there's a couple of things. I think I mean, we could look at this from a multi-year uh, planning. I think a lot of people agree that allow we're allowed to have borders right now, allowing borders to have uh, a stove if they're family members, i.e. parents living in your house or, or your, your children living there makes a lot of sense. We can do that in the short term. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done at the Union of BC Municipalities um, to look at a borders plus type uh, tenancy act where we can actually allow owner-occupied suites to to get around the, the, the restrictions of the Tenancy Act. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do in terms of strategy. If we want this in our community, this has to be decided as part of a community plan, but it should be in the right places and service, service, serving the broader community. Um, there's lots more to talk about, obviously. It's very hard in one minute, but I do definitely uh, uh, app you know, appreciate this is a, a complicated issue. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Supplementary, his name. This clearly is a very uh, divided issue in our community. And uh, as many of you know, three years ago, the mayor assigned a committee to deal with this, and we learned that uh, the community is extremely polarized. And so as a council, we've decided to regroup and address this under the OCP as a wider uh, housing strategy. And, and I think this is wise, given the divisiveness. Uh, we really can't go forward. I do think that as we have these conversations in the future, it's critical that we have a diversity of voices at the table who uh, speak for and against and also around other housing options. I think that's critical. I'm not clear whether it's going to be a one-size-fits-all. Uh, the Henderson community up here, for example, has some very specific issues because of their proximity to the university. I've heard one resident tell me that Henderson's like UVic's dormitory. And um, UVic has just published a draft strategic plan that shows their intention to double the capacity of on-campus residents. Because a lot of the issues have to do with trying to accommodate residents there. As Oak Bay develops this OCP and then UVic finalizes this strategic plan, it really will bode us well to bring uh, these stakeholders together to the table to have Ten a conversation seconds, about how we address a larger housing strategy. Thank you. Ms. Um, thank you. Um, I was, I have been a member of the of the Secondary Suites Task Force for, for approximately two years. We've received input from other municipalities in the region. 
Um, and uh, the conclusion that we've come to is with respect to suites, the main issue is around regulated versus unregulated. There are about approximately, well, over 1,500 unregulated suites in Obey that already exist. Um, we've d uh, requested uh, responses to a survey that was distributed broadly through the community. The results of that survey were not conclusive. Uh, we certainly need more information and, need, and, and I think, again, uh, to underscore what's already been said, we need to be looking at the bigger housing picture. Um, the issues around regulation of suites themselves have to do with parking. Parking is always a, con a major concern. Grandfathering um, and, the, and, the, and the insistence on owner occupation. But again, uh, uh, suites are not necessarily the answer for our community. Uh, but need to be looked at in terms of the bigger picture uh, as a range of housing op options uh, within a housing policy for Oak Bay. Thank you. Question for our Maryland candidates now, please. Sorry, am I wrong? Is that just two? I have that as three, but all right. I'll check my math for our councillors. Gentlemen here. Excuse me, can you wait for the microphone, sir, please? Thank you. There we go. I've only lived in uh, Oak Bay for four years, but uh, my wife was born here, so I'm starting to take an interest in the, in the politics. I went to the, to the town hall meeting at the Monterey Center a while ago, and there's, I came out of that with, with the feeling that if there was one issue, it's the communication between council and the residents. So uh, now I notice in reading the blurbs of all the uh, candidates uh, and uh, listening to what they have to say, everyone is in favor of communication. Almost to, to, a, uh, to the last body, everyone wants to communicate. So I thought, ah, I want to see how easy it is to communicate. So I tried, I went into the phone book. I went into 41, account of 411. I went into the website of the municipality and I went into as many blogs and websites of the candidates as I could. Generally speaking, it's a hard slog to get a telephone number for all the candidates. So my question to Councillor Herbert and uh, Councillor Taranay is, are you in favor of including telephone numbers on the municipal website for candidates and mayor. Thank you, sir, for the question. I'm going to divert one of these questions. Councillor Herbert, if you would answer first, and then I'm going to direct it to Mr. Carver. Thank yes, you. sir. If you picked up one of my pamphlets, you'll notice my phone number on the back, my email address. I have told anyone who's interested, I live on Cavendish Avenue, my phone number is in the book. I'm totally delighted if they put my phone number in the website of Oak Bay, my email address. Uh, I, I would assume by the number of phone calls I get each week for everything from potholes to, to, uh, to uh, deer that an awful lot of people know my phone number, so I'm sorry if you had difficulty. Thank you. Mr. Carver. I, I agree totally. I have no issue at all with my phone number, which was supposed to be on my uh, on my flyer that everyone has. My email address is on there. So I, as an elected representative, I fully expect that you be able to contact me, whether it be by email, electronically, or by phone. I have no issue in that whatsoever. So I apologize if you were not able to do that. But my, again, my email address is there. My, my home address is on, as all of the candidates are. So I have no issue in that at all, sir. Could I just clarify? I'm not talking about during the No, no. Again, 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 I, again. I have no issue at all if I'm an, if I'm your elected representative of having you having access to a phone number and be able to access me electronically, Thank none you. whatsoever. We'll we'll move on. Supplementary answer, Mr. Berger. Apparently, I'm going to talk now. Um, I wanted to pick up on the communication issue. Uh, so, absolutely, I'm fully in favor of listing phone numbers and email addresses on the website. I think one of the key things about communication is that it's not just about one method or one process. Is It's about getting to talking to people in as many places and as many ways as possible because everybody is different and different people have, I mean, many of the people in this room uh, 
communicate by email, many people are more comfortable with the phone. So there's that. We also need to go out to the community in terms of communication. It shouldn't just be you talking and coming talking to us. We should be out in our community centers, in our coffee shops, in our libraries, and electronically there should be ways uh, that we're communicating out to you via various methods, including smartphones. So, thanks very much. Thank you. Now that my math has been cleared up, question please for our mayoralty candidates. Supplementary? Uh, sir, I'm sorry, I read at the start of the meeting that what I have the liberty of doing to make sure that all the candidates are heard from is to divert questions from time to time, and that's what I did there, so we'll take, we'll take two um, and move on to question for mayor. Sorry? Uh, yes, you can do a supplemental. <laughs> Your second. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for the question. And to, the short of it is, yes, I think all our information should be on that website. Those websites should be the portal to City Hall, and you should be able to directly access us. Really, democracy only works when we all participate. The way for, for you to participate is that we are able to stay connected. And I want you to know you can contact me anytime you want at 5.30 in the morning at the Starbucks on Oak Bay, okay? Thank you. Question for our Maryland candidates. Okay. My question is directed to uh, Nils and Hazel in regards to the uh, secondary suites. Uh, a couple years ago, Hazel, you chaired a committee looking into them. A year later, I think Nils took that job on. Um, my question is, to each of you, what action did you take and uh, what results were the outcome of chairing that uh, committee? Thank you. Mr. Jensen? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the uh, committee was first uh, constituted in 2008 and um, I became chair in 2009 at the request of the mayor. Um, what we did uh, when I had uh, meetings of the, uh, the committee uh, started almost right away. We held eight uh, public meetings, uh, one right here uh, in this uh, area, and then one in the, uh, an extra community meeting down in the South Oak Bay. Uh, we uh, surveyed the community, as you've heard before. Uh, we surveyed the uh, rest of the BC municipalities and see what they were doing in the area of secondary suites, as well as the regional. And we got together, uh, and I should just add, our, all of our meetings, committee meetings, were open to the public. So in the sense that the first agenda item for every meeting was, let's hear from the public. Uh, after that, uh, we set about writing the report. I wrote the report on behalf of the committee, presented it to the committee, and then uh, they approved it and it went to council. Uh, so that was the process uh, that uh, we went through. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't see the red sign. Thank you. Ms. Braithwaite? Thanks, Jim. Must have been listening to CFAX the other day because we had that exact same question on CFAX. Um, so, for my part in that, um, yes, I was uh, chair of that committee in 2008. It was actually further into 2008 when it was determined that committee would be formed, and um, the mayor asked me to chair that. We did have two meetings of, um, of this, the current staff person, who was Nigel Beatty, uh, and Councillor Herbert and Councillor Copley. And then we were looking for the, um, uh, the residents uh, who would be involved. And then we had a staff change at Municipal Hall. So what happened then was we had to back away from the, the secondary suite committee. We had to wait for the new person to come in, and that was Roy Thomason. And by that time, it was the end of the year, and that was when the mayor makes his decisions on when to change and who to redirect to committees. So really, it was not a really productive first six or seven months on that committee. Thank you. Questions again for council? Gentlemen over here, and we'll come up to the balcony next. I'll be on for me, okay, thank you. <clears throat> I attended all of the uh, secondary suite committee meetings and all the council meetings and all the public meetings. And I have a major concern, and that is that 
Uh, we shoot first and then we try to deal with the impacts after. <clears throat> There's an estimated 150,000 illegal secondary suites in BC. That's BC government figures. <clears throat> this translates in a lot of people using services and infrastructure. That's also a lot of potential tax dollars going to a li limited number of owners. <clears throat> the property tax system is uh, inequitable already. I haven't heard that debate recently, however. Maybe that's because we've been busy fighting off new imposed taxes and user fees. A lot of these, these facts are irrefutable. <clears throat> In imposing restrictions, um, if imposing restrictions is all that was required to control illegal suites, how come municipalities continue to struggle with serious impacts after legalization? If you look through the provincial Sir, guide I need, to local government... I need a question. You're over your yeah, minute. Could I have I'm a question, please? Limit. Oh, wow. Okay. If that's all that's required, municipality after municipality has been struggling with sweet problems. My question is to Corey Berger and Pam Copley. How would you ensure Oak Bay does not suffer the same extreme sweet legalization impacts that other municipalities have? Thank you. Mr. Berger, followed by Ms. Copley. Uh, I think the, the best way to look at that is we do have uh, two municipalities on our immediate border that have looked at uh, secondary suites. The first one is uh, Saanich, so those of you who live in the Lansdowne, Lansdowne Slope, Anderson, your immediate neighbors to the west have secondary suites. And if you are further south, you live south of Oak Bay Avenue, your neighbors to the west in the city of Victoria also have legalized secondary suites. So we have a great deal of experience right next door in very, very similar communities to ours. So we can take a look at that. And by and large, the research I've done looked into it, there are, there are issues that do crop up, small ones, but they aren't large enough to terminate the entire process as a whole. So I do, I mentioned, I, I'll emphasize again, I do support secondary suites because I do believe we are acknowledging the fact on the ground. You yourself mentioned how many there are in BC, and I think we can deal with the small issues that do crop up through bylaws. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Coughlin. Um, thank you. Um, as I mentioned, um, the, I would prefer to refer to regulated as, as opposed to uh, versus unregulated. Um, in the uh, reports that we had from other municipalities which have either legalized or regulated suites, um, the, the anticipated problems didn't seem to occur. But um, again, I think that we have to decide what is what is it that we need in our community? What are the needs that we're trying to address? And will sweets be the answer to those, to those needs? Um, and again, if we look at a broader housing policy within the context of an OCP review, then um, I believe, and, and, and we engage our, our citizens in that consultation process, then we're gonna get at what we really need. At this point, we don't have the information to make a decision about suites specifically, and I don't think we should be going that route. We really do be, need to look, be looking at the larger, bigger picture and the housing policy within the OCP review. Thank you. Supplemental, Mr. Murdoch. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think one of the, your primary point on that one was that you want, you know, there is a lot of lost taxes available. We're impacting the infrastructure and so forth. Uh, all of that is true, uh, but the reality is that even if you legalize them, very few people come forward. The experience in Saanich when they made a, a, a carte blanche was essentially eight to 12 people came forward and said, we want to be above board on this because it's all stacked against the homeowner at this point. You have to pay municipal taxes, you have to pay income taxes, you come under the Tenancy Act where if you have a problem tenant, you can't get rid of them. There's almost nothing there that actually gives them an incentive to come forward and pay those taxes. And even though most of the people who live in Oak Bay are, you know, would like to be above board on that, it's so stacked against them that it's very hard to get people to do it and do it right. So I think there's actually one of the reasons I said, you know, looking forward, looking at some variations to the Tenancy Act and those sorts of things, I think we have to make, if we're going to consider that, then we have to make the whole... Uh, environment more friendly to homeowners to actually do it. Otherwise, we're not going to collect any taxes at all. And I'd also make a point on that, that besides taxes, that it is really worthwhile uh, in the big picture just to allow police and fire to know where they're going so that they're responding to an incident. If there's two suites in a house, to be able to get into those places. So there's lots of things to consider. Thank you. Thank you. 
Another question for council. We had a question up in the balcony, I believe. Sorry, can you wait, ma'am, till the microphone gets there so we can all hear? Thank you. My question is to Ms. Braithwaite and the mayor, if that's appropriate. I'm sorry, ma'am, we're taking questions for council right now. Okay, well, we'll I'll be back to mayor in a while. Okay, question I'll have for to wait for that then, I guess. Okay. All right, thank you. Over here. Thank you. Um, my question deals with the role of council and the functioning of council and the role of our elected officials. And I would direct this question to uh, Corinne Green and to Pam Copley. Um, my reason for asking the question is that we seem to be uh, facing an agenda of unresolved issues, uh, no professional planning help, uh, a community plan that is severely outdated. Um, so when the new council gets elected, what is the difference in the role between a councillor and a mayor? And who is it that takes responsibility for moving this agenda forward? Um, is, uh, is the mayor, does the mayor have different authority from council? Just, just the person who wears the gold chain? <laughs> or is there some authority that's unique and someone is going to move the agenda forward? Thank you. Ms. Green? Yes, thank you for the question. In my own experience, and I can't speak for um, others, but in my own experience, the mayor is actually the chief executive officer of the municipality. And the mayor has certain authorities that council members do not have. For instance, appointment, appointments to committees and commissions, appointments to the CRD, um, leading uh, policy reviews and strategic planning and working very closely with the chief administrative officer who um, they, they work often, in, often together. In my experience though, every council member has a, one vote, including the mayor, one vote. And I think we're all responsible, collectively, to move issues and to move goals forward. We're all responsible and we're all accountable to our taxpayers and our voters. So I don't think anyone has any more responsibility than the other in terms of decision making. But the mayor does have some additional responsibilities that include um, internal communication, uh, that include appointments, and establishing leadership, um, a model of leadership that others would like to hopefully emulate. Um, so that there is a leadership responsibility, but each and every one of us has one vote, and each and every one Ten of us... Ten seconds, please. Yes, each and every one of us is also a community leader if, uh, if the community puts their trust in us. Thank you. Ms. Copley. Um, I, I, I think um, um, uh, Ms. Green is, I won't reiterate what she said about the different roles of, of council and, um, and, um, and the mayor, but um, again, just, just at a very high level, I think council's major, main role is to represent uh, and be the voice of the residents and to act in the best interests of the community. And, and to bring forward uh, appropriate community interests to the, to the council table. The mayor, on the other hand, um, is, uh, I believe, is the one to provide the vision, uh, to be open in how he or she communicates, uh, to provide direction and leadership to council, but to work collaborat collaboratively and inclusively with council to address matters brought forward by council or the residents. Um, I, I think in terms of, um, uh, and, and also to be the collective voice at, at the regional level, say at the CRD table, sometimes in the media and at public events. Um, but um, I, I think that there's an important point here is that, um, uh, again, uh, if we are thinking about working inclusively and collectively, we need resident input. Uh, I was acting mayor at the town hall meeting in April. We heard that you, you want to have a say Ten at seconds, that table. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Another question for council, and before this question comes, I'm going to ask that one of the people this is directed at is Mr. Hartnell, so Mr. Hartnell will get one of the answers, and if you'd please indicate the other person uh, that you would like that question to go to. Gentleman at the back, um, by the door. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to direct the other part of my question to Mr. Carver, please. Mr. Hartnell and Mr. Carver. Thank you. Um, it's, it's been pointed out a number of times, and I think it's very true, that most of the decision-making is made by council. 
and we have here quite a large repertoire of individuals who want to step forward and it's really hard to predict how a person is going to perform as a counselor in the future and amongst all the things that have been studied about what makes for successful recruitment past performance is the strongest indicator of future performance so my question to those two individuals is what charity do you support why do you support it and what have you done for it in the last year um, I'm really not sure that that's an appropriate question um, for this group tonight, uh, if, if I may say so. Um, so I would ask that another question, and I'm happy to leave it with Mr. Hartnell and Mr. Carver, another question for council, please. I guess my, my concern, and I'm not sure if it's a real issue, but I want to make sure we've got this sort of though it is. We talked about, uh, again, kind of glossed over amalgamation, which is really has to do with how, how regions work together, either as one body or as a bunch of little balkanized. And it seems to me that a lot of times that there's, there's issues that, that we kind of gloss over and kind of go along and then, and then something pops up and we find out, oh, it could have been handled a lot better. And I'm not saying that it would take something this dramatic, but as an example, just in something as basic, not, not basic, but something as fundamental as policing, it sounds like at the, at the time of the, uh, the murder of Terry McLean, whatever, there was some, maybe not handled as well. We've seen examples in, in, uh, in around Toronto area where there, was, where there was uncoordinated, and also, also in the case uh, right now, uh, police are being castigated for their handling of, you know what? So, so the question is, could we do some smart way, it doesn't have to necessarily be amalgamation, but a lot better coordination so that any of these sleeper issues don't pop up in other areas, and, and, and we're smart about it. Thank you. You gentlemen have the question. All right, Mr. Carver, then Mr. Hart. One of the challenges we have when we have a, a, a very large capital regional district with a, 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 a huge number of municipalities like we do here with, with nu numerous police entities, and I'll focus on that, is what we need to do to ensure success. We need to have all of the information that is coming in. We, we don't have to amalgamate. We don't have to say, okay, let's make everything one. But what we have to do is ensure that everyone is participating and all of the information dealing with any of those incidents that you're talking about is coming into one central location. That information is po properly analyzed and that information is properly s disseminated to the agency or the agencies that are responsible for it. That's your key to success. Again, let's go back to investigating the offender and not the offense. And some of the tragedies that we've already seen, that's the, that, that was the issues. We weren't looking at the people, we were looking at the offense afterwards. We need to put our resources in to looking at the offender and what the offenders are doing in our community. If you're looking at the offense, it's too late. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hartnell. Uh, when I introduced myself earlier this evening, I emphasized tax cuts. And so that would, of course, include extortionate demands from the policemen's union, from their management. I don't think Oak Bay needs any more police. I would try to reduce the cost of the Oak Bay police budget. I'm all quite uh, theoretically in favor, of course, of cooperation among the various different police forces, but as a trained historian, I'll remind you of the infamous Peter Lee murder-suicide where two or three uh, uh, police forces were crawling around on that Oak Bay property that night when the Oak Bay High School kids were having their big debauch on the high school property. The Oak Bay police were diverted from proper attention to that 911 call. Thank you. Supplementary, Mr. Jensen. Thank you very much. For 
Thank you very much for that question. Um, we've seen uh, a, a move in uh, Scrymont and Victoria towards uh, an amalgamated police force. We've seen the results of that after a number of years as Scrymont wanted out. Uh, what we have been developing here between Saanich and Oak Bay is a, is a more cooperative, integrated model where police boards are maintained in each community. And I mentioned earlier that the police board is chaired by the mayor. Now, uh, that's the solution I think that we should look for for the region where we maintain community policing locally, provide a high level of service, a service that our community has come to expect. And I think we need to protect that. That doesn't mean we can't cooperate on regional crime units, which we're already doing. Now, uh, one area, though, and I've been vice chair of the emergency radio system for the last three years, uh, and looking at all their governance policies, and there's one of the, one of the things that's come out of, of uh, being part of that is the question is, should we have here in the Greater Victoria area one dispatch service? In other words, all calls going to one. And that's some of the, in some areas of the uh, lower mainland, particularly in Abbotsford, that's how they have it. So that's, some, that's a concrete thing that we can do that in fact will deal with the, uh, the point seconds, that was made by Mr. Hartnell. All calls going into one, there's one unit that dispatches the police, fire and ambulance. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take uh, what will be the last question for our mayorly candidates. It's now 10 minutes to 9. We uh, promised we would start you at 7 and we'll finish at 9, so we may not get to all three council questions, but uh, we'll go right for the next 10 minutes. So, question for... Yes, we have missed you the last couple of times. So, there you go. Just wait for the mic, please. Thank you. My question to Ms. Braithwaite and uh, Mr. Jensen. Uh, what not has been addressed tonight is the variance for parking. While I detest the idea of lodge, it's in my backyard, but the variance is going from uh, 320 spots to 107 in an already enormously congested neighborhood of Boker, Cranmore, Hampshire, and Cadborough Bay. I need to know what your opinion is on this a request for variance. Thank you very much. I'm going to let that go. I, I, we've had a lot of questions on the Oak Bay Lodge, but as this is parking, please respond. Ms. Braithwaite. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, that's a huge variance. It sounds like a huge variance on paper, and I understand the issues that have been uh, with parking around that area. You know, that parking lot used to not be a, a pay parking lot. They changed it to pay parking, and all of the staff at Oak Bay Lodge then started parking on our streets. That was a, a huge issue, and I know where your house is. I know it's right around the corner, and people speed by there all the time. So the, the, the question that you're asking is in regards to that very large variance. And I think that when you look at the um, information that's coming forward, the number of parking spots that they have, they're saying is sufficient for the number of residents that are going to be there, the number of staff, and um, the number of administrators, so the nursing staff and the administrators. We have to look at that closely to make sure that that's correct, because I don't want to see that, that parking spilling out onto the road. Thank you. Mr. Jensen? Thank you. <clears throat> There's one thing clear by that answer, that Yoke Bay Lodge neighbors are here in full force and well organized. Uh, thank you very much for, for the question. Uh, not only is parking an issue, and I think we have to be very careful that we insist that the developer keep all of the residents' uh, cars, and there probably will not be very many of those, if at all, but all of the service cars and all of the employees' cars on that property as opposed to spilling out as they had in the past. One of the equally important questions is the circulation though. One of the things that caused uh, me grave concern was having uh, a bigger lodge with more traffic and the traffic going out onto Cranmore. And uh, that was problematic. And one of the things that I, I requested early on was a consideration that that exit be closed. You also have to think about what's going to happen on the other side of Cranmore in terms of circulation and parking, particularly in the short run. We're going to have Oak Bay High School being built, $50 million on one side, $80 million on the other. How are we going to accommodate all that? It's going to be a challenge. Thank you.
Thank you. Question now for council. We have uh, six minutes left. Um, lady here. Sorry, can you just wait for the microphone? Thank you. Um, I can't believe that we've got to the end of this debate and nobody has asked about deer. So, um, I'm going to ask about it and I'm, I'm going to address it uh, to Ms. Green um, and, and to uh, Ms. Kirkpatrick. Um, what are your views on the problem and what kind of st uh, steps would you take um, to move the issue forward about the challenges that uh, Oak Bay residents are facing with the deer? Thank you. Ms. Green? Yes, th thank you very much for the question. Um, I'm a motorcyclist as well, so I know how dangerous deer are. And they're more dangerous in Oak Bay than they are <laughs> elsewhere that I've experienced. Um, they, they have to be called. And there is a, a program in Cranbrook that has so far been very successful that involves public consultation. It involves uh, in-kind services from the province in the form of traps and a weapon, a bolt gun, which is a humane way of, of putting them down. It involves the community and inventory of how many deer there are and advisory um, from the community about how to proceed. But this program is groundbreaking. I attended an urban deer management workshop at UBCM in September, and I think it's a program that we could adapt to the needs of Oak Bay. I know it's a difficult issue, and I know there are people that have strong feelings on, on both sides of the issue. But my feeling is that the health and safety of residents supersedes the health and safety of deer. like to thank you for that question. I think it's something that affects everybody in Oak Bay. Um, the deer are clearly a hazard at their current population. At the last uh, All Candidates meeting, I, I spoke up about deer. Um, I think we all can have our stories of how deer have affected them. I personally live next door to an empty lot that has a two deer family in it and we're seeing them grow. We see the babies come out. They're, they're big but there's also some big bucks out there and um, I have a little four-year-old daughter and I don't let her play in the backyard by herself. It, it makes me nervous and I'm also a little bit concerned about the Lyme disease that they may carry with ticks. Um, they are a hazard at their current populations. They need to be dealt with. Um, it needs to be dealt with on a regional issue. Uh, the deer don't know the boundaries between Oak Bay and other, other municipalities. And um, so I believe it needs to be done on a regional issue, but I think something needs to be done right away. We need to get on it. And I, for one, would be very, very happy to be on a committee to get on it as soon as we possibly could. Thank you. Thank you. Supplemental answers, and we have a number. We'll start with Mr. Jensen. Okay, they're looking for the hot button item. Uh, there you go. So I've heard of the elephant in the room. I think this is the deer in the room that we've all been uh, avoiding. Uh, and this is a major problem. It's a safety problem on our roads. It's a health problem because of uh, Lyme disease and ticks. It's something that we have to come to grips with. What we can't do, we can't go alone, however. This is a regional issue. I mean, if we were to start calling on our own here in Oak Bay, they would, more would come in from Victoria, more would come in from Sandwich. This has to be uh, resolved at the regional level. Now, at the regional level, and we heard uh, from uh, uh, Councillor Herbert before, sometimes things do take time. But we need a representative on that uh, CRD board that can push that agenda. Right? And I, I think the, uh, the, the, it's necessary to have that kind of experience. I've been on the water board for years, which has been a great area for regional cooperation. I think we need to kind of push that region to do something. We're going to look to see what hap what's happening in Cranbrook. Cranbrook's the first community in BC to be given a cull license. We need to examine that, and then we need to go forward with action. Thank you. Thank you. Supplemental, Ms. Woods. I don't want to repeat everything people have said, but there are two other things that I uh, think are important. One is the, um, the cougars are coming further into our 
our community and I think that they're following the deer so that's another concern and also farmers being put out of business by their crops being eaten um, but we can't do it alone as a municipality um, as my husband put it the other night if Oak Bay comes up with a plan to to um, call the deer then the other municipalities will be forming cowboy gangs at night to drive their deers into our community so <laughs> we can take like they do in city slickers um, so Anyway, um, it's not really a laughing matter, but the point of the matter is, uh, is a call what we want to do? No. Is it the responsible thing to do? Yes. Uh, we are responsible for taking care of the environment that we have created. Thank you. Supplementary, Mr. Hartman. I'd just like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I, of course, am not an animal liberationist, and I believe we need a call here. There's two other issues that have not been mentioned. I'll just mention them very briefly. Geoengineering, dumps on our organic gardens, that's got to stop. I'm referring to chemtrails. And I also want to commend the council for having stood with the majority of municipalities at the recent uh, municipal convention, where 55% of them stood against the arbitrary uh, it putting in of these so-called smart meters. We've got to stop the smart meter. Thank you. Supplemental, Ms. Braithwaite. I confused you again. Thank you very much. Um, I don't want to repeat some of the stuff that's been said, but I think that there's some important things that we can add. Yes, we have to have a strong voice around the CRD board, but as we all know, the CRD can suffer from paralysis by analysis. And we need to make sure that we have a strong enough voice to push them forward. Yes, the deer have no boundaries. We understand that. We need something that Oak Bay will push forward. I think the buck stops here. No pun intended. Thank you. Did I miss anybody over here who wanted another supplemental? I wasn't sure whether I saw a hand or not. Okay, thank you, because that makes our timing perfect. It's now nine o'clock. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal part of the evening. All of the candidates will remain here uh, at their tables if you wish to come up and ask questions individually. Thank you before we go to the North Henderson Residents Association and the Community Association of Oak Bay for organizing and sponsoring tonight's meeting and the one held last Friday. Attending, and also my personal thanks to the 13 candidates for mayor and council. <laughs> to these ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to say that democracy in our community is well served by all of these people having the courage and conviction to stand for public office. Thank you all, and good night. <laughs>